Welcome back to the rest of the story. No, we aren't currently round baling fodder right now. Uh, this video is from a couple years ago. I think I actually did a video on it. Um, the video that I had filmed for tonight, it was actually a ride along in the Gator. So this, yeah, this one will work. Um, well, that footage, the video like froze on me halfway along the ride. So whatever. Um, anyway, well, in this video, we're doing some custom round baling of corn fodder, which I no longer do. And it looks like I'm over in Cuba City. I think the field for itself pretty much says that. Um, it's a fairly flat, very gently rolling hill. Um, yeah, <laughs> obviously we don't have any ground like that over at home. A lot of our stuff's a little bit more rolling than this. Um, definitely... Well, I wouldn't mind renting any ground over by Cuba City if I ever had a chance to, to rent it. But Okay, um, moving on. As of what is going on around here lately, well, it is snowing. It's the first, probably the second real snowstorm we've had here this year. Um, back during harvest, um, end of November, mid-November, I think, is when we had uh, the first, like, couple of a few inches worth of snow and that was supposed to be just a a light dusting and that didn't happen <laughs> we got significantly more but um we're getting a lot of our crop inputs figured up for the rest of the year as is what january is typically used for this time of year um we aren't planting any agrigold this year uh, we are going to be planting decalb NK and some Dairyland. Um, the Dairyland did perform really well right along with the little bit of DeKalb we had last year and the Agrigold we had last year also. Um, I'm going to be top dressing and side dressing this year unless the year gets dry and you know saved on the nitrogen but um, yep we aren't doing anhydrous and hydrous priced itself out of being realistic. Well, I can't really say that. It is more expensive than what it was last fall. It went up, and it priced itself out of being worth it for us. Um, we are going to be going with a, well, with our first pass in the spring, we're going to be putting some 28 down with the sprayer. We'll be putting down liquid starter with the corn planter. And then... Everybody knows, well, anybody that's new to the channel doesn't know this, but I'll be putting down a side-dressed pass with the cultivator. Um, not across all of my ground, just across most of it. I do have some ground that uh, yields really well, even, well, it's just better ground, um, that it doesn't need the extra nitrogen, the extra money put down on it, so I'd rather save on the money. I will be cultivating it nonetheless. Um, well, we can sit and argue about cultivating all we want, but, and then we are going to be doing, um, I believe across all of our acres this year, um, a top dress, dressing pass of urea. Um, that's to try to split up our nitrogen applications. Um, and hydrous, if you could apply it, um, really does work well as a standalone nitrogen pass late in the fall. I mean, we've done some in the spring in the past when we've had to. This would be this would have been our third year of anhydrous, but um, if it comes back down in price, we will look into applying it this upcoming fall for two thousand uh, for twenty twenty. Um, urea last year I did a farm that I picked up late in the year. Um, well, late it was February. Um, I didn't really have plans or the intentions to do anhydrous. I mean, I at the time I was gonna just do urea um, what Andrew ended up deciding on doing or didn't decide it he recommended it is to go ahead and top dress it so I did go through I put on the liquid with the corn planter right on the seed and then I did go through and side dress with the cultivator I did that late May might have been the first week of June now that I think about that and um, I think we got right to was it a week I think it was a week before no, the corn was about shoulder high. Um, then they went in with a top dressing machine 
and they top dressed the corn. It did burn it a little bit. It did look kind of kind of rough for a little bit, but the corn did yield really well. It actually did hold its own with the anhydrous on the rest of the ground we have. Um, it's largely a weather thing. Um, all forms of nitrogen have their own ups and downs and whatever else. Um, urea, if I just went through and broadcasted that before we planted, I wouldn't have had the same results as if, as I did when I put it in season, um, rainfall and everything else. So, and I kind of got off from what I was going to say, but anybody that is going to the Louisville, Kentucky farm show this year and planning on seeing my brother, uh, that is, I'm not sure what day, I think he's going to be down there Friday. So, um, I myself um, have said in the past I wouldn't mind going to a show like that. Um, probably just being the kind of person I am, um, not something that I would really do every single year. And it turns out um, things kind of lined up where I'm going to be going down to the Louisville, Kentucky Farm Show uh, the sa that Saturday, the last day that they have it. At least that is the current plan, so don't. Don't get too excited yet. I'm not saying anybody's going to be too excited to see me down there. Um, you just might see me when we we do go. Um, the goal is to leave Friday, be down there Saturday, and be back home Sunday. So it's going to be kind of a, a busy weekend. Um, the way we got it set up, we should have everybody around <laughs> like throughout the time here. So nobody's there's always going to be somebody here because we do have chores and everything else to do. But um, between everybody that's going, hopefully Andrew, our agronomist, um, myself, um, and my friend Ryan, hopefully all three of us can still stay on course to go. Um, as of within the last 24 hours, the plan is for all three of us to go, plus our significant others. So I'm actually looking forward to it being a pretty fun time and actually be able to walk around and see some of the equipment they have at at this show. I've heard, been told that it is uh, one of the bigger ones to go to. So, I mean, Ryan's gone for the last, what, two, three weeks now? And the camera just took a fall. Uh, do I fix it or not? Just keep driving. Nope. Nope, good enough. Oh, we're going to drive inverted. <laughs> Um, yeah, so everybody else that, anybody that might be down there Saturday that doesn't really get a chance to, or hasn't had a chance to see us the at the farm day we've done in the past on the farm, uh, the farm day isn't happening this year, and for 2019, um, it's still a question mark as to whether or not one will be done in 2020, we'll have to wait and see, um, I don't know. Um, definitely have some people that are down in Kentucky I wouldn't mind seeing again. I know Big Tractor Power, that's pretty much where he runs. That's his area of the world. But um, I don't know. It might be fun. Also, if you guys have not done anything for the giveaway, um, that was uh, released last night. If you guys want a chance to win a 1 16th scale John Deere 7600, um, potentially signed by me, Ryan, whoever else around here, Rocket, if you so much desire. Uh, make sure you go to that giveaway video. It should be listed at the end of this video. If not, just go to my channel. Um, you have to be subscribed to the channel. You have to like and comment on the giveaway announcement video also. But um, it's a free to, free to apply. Um, free chance to win. All you got to do is meet the requirements and you're already uh, able to win. And I will be announcing before the end of the month who the winner is. So keep an eye out on my channel and then hopefully go from there. So um, that's all I really got to say for tonight, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. Stay warm. The snow blizzard conditions winter has is back for now. Let's see how long it stays around. So talk to you later. And now you know the rest of the story.